The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Good morning, everyone. I'm here this morning to introduce what BIM is and why it's important in the Reinforced concrete business, and maybe describe some of these acronyms. So, so I'm going to go through at the introduction level. Why is interoperability important? I'm sure that many of you already realize that, but as a quick reminder, I think the more interesting part is what is the current interoperability practices, and what what is the national BIM standard, and how to, how does that come come into play? So, we're starting from a view from the concrete producer concrete co contractor. And the, this is just to identify things aren't sitting in one application, there's multiple applications and the number of applications are growing. So that there's a lot of interop and these are not sitting in one application so, so you can't do it all in one platform. So each one of these arrows means that there has to be a flow of exchanges. They're, all, they're not all centralized around concrete layout and detailing, but in this diagram, it's just showing the interactions between your business and other people's business. And the list will go on, and the list will grow with BIM technology evolving as it is. I'm sure next year we'll see other kinds of technologies and new kinds of exchanges. And of course, and is it mainstream? I thought I'd just interject this example where in the mechanical MEP layout, the architectural firm realized that they had tight packing in the mechanical equipment. At the, at the design stage, they lay, laid out all the ductwork and the piping system. When it came to the contractor's work, the MEP con contractor, whether it wasn't a BIM user, worked in the tr traditional way, layering up in the ceiling ran out of space, charged was an infeasible project, sued the architectural firm. The ar architectural firm showed that BIM allowed this layout to be done by, and I, I guess they were criticized for not elaborating on the need to have careful layout. But BIM, BIM was recognized as the standard of practice in that, that court case. And of course that was four, four years ago. So there haven't been that many cases on, on BIM, but I think we'll see the courts legitimizing BIM as a standard of practice. Now, what are we talking about translation? We're really talking about migration of application data from one tool to, to another tool. The original way of doing this, of course, is a direct translation between, say, Tecla and Revit or similar kinds of applications. More recently, in, over the last 10, 15 years, we've been looking at neutral file exchanges where, where there's a neutral file in the middle and each application writes in and out to that application. This opens it up so third party groups can write those translators as, as well as with uh, direct translation. So, so we're going to be talking today mostly about neutral file translators, which means that there's a neutral file sitting in the middle that carries the data that's the common information needed between application A and application B. Now this is not a new idea unique to the reinforced concrete industry or the AEC industry. It's really true across all of the manufacturing. An organization called ISO 10303 or called ISO STEP is an international standard org organization that has developed the base technology for writing exchanges between one application and another. And their range is really quite broad. Those of you who can read this, even though it's quite small, in, in electronics area, automotive area, building area, we have multiple process plant shipbuilding and other industries. 
this is generally called ISO-STEP technology. Uh, there's a Peter Sink group in Charleston that is the U.S. representative to the ISO-STEP te technology groups. In buildings, we've got the structural steel, now called CIS-2, uh, explicit geometry, which is only used in Germany, I think a little bit, IFC, and, the, and then there's a the furniture manufacturing one, too, which I put into this list. So we're really building on a broad technology base that was developed across all of these industries, and they're all using the same kind of technology base in terms of languages, uh, basic libraries, there's a common geometric library called AAP42, which has geometry for all kinds of any shape you want. You want a turbine fan blade, it can be represented in part 42. You want a freeform pylon and reinforced concrete, you can represent that too. So industry foundation class started, has a long history, 1986, and is slowly getting widely adopted almost everywhere in, in that industry foundation classes the adoption of ISO step technology to AEC applications, of course, of which uh, reinforced concrete is a main, significant example. So IFC is defined, documented, and soon will certified using the languages and technology defined in ISO step. ISO 16739 is the ISO step number for uh, IFC. IFC is becoming more widely accepted all the time. GSA adopted it for certain parts of the process in the federal government. Army Corps of Engineers uh, have exchanged for FM handover at the end of the construction, generally from the general contractor to the facility owner. Singapore uses IFC as a modeling language for Cornet. Coronet is the largest automated code checking <coughs> application in the world at this point, uh, and they claim to have 85% of the code checking auto automated at that, this time, ba based on the I IFC exchange standard. Two other recent adoptions, UK government is planning to require BIM and then later IFC adoption for all governmental projects. Federal Highway Administration has just re recently started a significant project on bridge information modeling, which is an extension of the, of, of the IFC standards to co cover infrastructure, roads, and bridges. Now, but what is IFC and what is the BIM standard? IFC is a data model schema or database schema for representing all types of building information at different levels of detail. Many of you are probably familiar with LOD, uh, level of development that came out of the California AIA uh, initially and is getting pretty widely ad adopted. We have to cover those different levels of development as well as the different kinds of construction in uh, the IFC standards. In two 2008, under the National Institute of Building Science, uh, there's an organization called Building Smart Alliance which is the North American chapter of the IFC International Building Smart Organization. It's readily available for downloading at that website at the bottom. Basically what it is, is how to de develop standardized exchanges between different applications, which is what, what we're really talking about. It has a four-step process. This is really based on U.S. industry kind, kinds of practice. Some of the European countries, it's really mandated at the government level. Singapore is a very top-down structure. They said we're going to use IFC. Everybody in the industry adopted IFC. They don't have the same organizations that we have in the U.S. So the first step is what, what is the scope? We're going to form an ad hoc committee like ACI 131. And ACI 131 then has to identify a scope for, of a of a particular initiative. It might be all of reinforced concrete. It might be just a subset of reinforced concrete. It might be the architectural exchanges. It may be the fabrication level, level exchanges. It may be the field and installation exchanges. So, so we have, have to define a scope. Then what are the requirements? 
where are these exchanges and what is the content of them for, from a user, user's perspective. The construct is translating that then in, into IFC and defining the IFC specifications. The third stage is really how to build it and how to debug it. So th this is intensive work with, with the software company. It's a collaborative activity where the software companies uh, develop the translators to the specifications developed by the National BIM Standard wor Working Committee like the ACI 131. After it's defined, the software companies uh, implement it, then there's the te testing and certification process. And of course, that's a significant activity also. And, and then field testing. So we have a good process, but it's a slow and expensive process. There's significant work going on right now to, to speed it up, make it shorter. 48 months is a too, too much too long a time. We'd like to get that down to certainly less than a year, maybe into the months. So there's a lot of work on the technology base. Computer applications that have no, no use for the end users, which I assume most of you are, but is very significant time-wise on, on the testing, validation, and adoption. So hard to read. All you can see is some yellow boxes maybe on this. So this is a process model that uh, Pete Corrado mentioned <laughs> for the IDM. This outlines the yellow boxes happen to be the uh, non-model non exchanges. There's a, a lot of very light green boxes there. Those are the model exchanges. Th this doesn't say this is the way every reinforced concrete project works, it, but it's the layout of maps. Here's a set of users on the left-hand side. Here's a set of phases, which are across the top of the screen. Say these kind of level of information at this level of development is needed for, for these exchanges between the structural engineering, the reinforced concrete, maybe the reinforced concrete contractor versus the rebar contractor, so on and so forth. So, so there's 26 of the, those exchanges that were identified by the, the committee. So as an example, this begins to show what the conversion is from the, the user definition of these exchanges to the technical IFC level neutral file definition. So how to, how to build that neutral file, cover the exchange, exchanges needed. So let me summarize by saying I'm working with three industry groups. The one that started the earliest and is almost done, should, should be done, but certainly this calendar year. By done, I mean software companies implementing. Uh, is the precast concrete. Casting place concrete has got the programming, the IDM level work uh, at the beginning. It's now in the midst of the identifying the IFC de definitions for that neutral file. I put structural steel on here also. They started out being very fast and, and working at the leading edge uh, a few years ago with the, with the structural steel using the older standard CIS2. But they've switched over to IFC. They're implementing one exchange standards right now, just one of the exchanges in their IDM. That's for robotic fabrication. So this is my introduction to what IFC is about.